You know that feeling? That sensation in the back of your head you used to get from those animations. The weightlessness you felt from being around those people. The wonder you had from that vista. Yeah, that's why I read philosophy. Camus showed me the beauty of risk. Debar showed me engagement. Watts showed me my position in the universe. James showed me my action in the universe. Thoreau showed me nature. Ortega showed me a rebirth of philosophy. Emerson showed me how to be reliant on my own nature. YouTube has given me nothing. And here's why. Every video on philosophy ever posted on YouTube is a Wikipedia article. It's just a summary of facts. It's a collection of statements. Unknowingly, millions of people have been robbed of the greatness which is philosophy. Until now. To explain to you my mission to save YouTube philosophy, we'll discover the difference between knowledge and being. The greatness that comes not from sharing jargon and truths, but instead, our state of mind. What a statement, right? My mission is to save YouTube philosophy. Well, the thing is, is philosophy has changed my life so much. I've had dreams of before of just retiring in my 20s and spending the rest of my life just reading the classics. You know, someday my dream is to introduce myself, not as a filmmaker, but as a philosopher. Philosophy, in my definition, is integral thought, which explores universal reality through the processes of mind conveyed through feeling reason states of being. We all act based on premises. We each have our own virtues. These assumptions we have about our world are philosophies. It can't be overstated then how important the search for truth is to our existence. This is my journal. I've written in this thing for like three years now. If we go back in time, there's a version of Charlie who started understanding Western philosophy and reading Buddhism, which is great. Um, but look at what I wrote exactly two years and two days ago. My state of mind has gotten worse. I noticed my underlying intention is to escape. I become entranced in everything. I spend hours a day now watching YouTube videos on Minecraft. I enter my mind to think about absolutely nothing, and I feel like I could remain there forever. I take naps every day now, and I stay in my room alone for so long. <laughs> What's so weird is that, like, I know what I'm doing. Like, I'm writing exactly what I'm doing, and yet I'm still doing it. In other entries, I even write about how life is absurd, your reality is whatever you create within it, blah, blah, blah. And then I just sit there in my room, doing nothing. The truth that's hard to accept is that we could discover the perfect recipe for life and still decide to use it as a mantelpiece. What we've discovered is the difference between knowledge and being. See, some things we think and other things we are. Knowledge is just the purgatory between these two. Like, try and imagine a person who only ever read the outlines of movies. Simba is the heir to the throne. Scar kills Mufasa, Scar blames Simba. Simba meets a pig. Simba kills Scar, Simba becomes king. This person has complete, total knowledge of this film. But do they really, if they never actually press play? When we watch movies, we elicit emotions. Yet the person who only reads the outlines doesn't. Therefore, they will never actually know what movies are like. Well, what if philosophy is the same? For thinking to ever make it past knowledge to arrive in being, it must be felt. This is why, contrary to common belief, philosophers rarely present themselves as scientists, but as poets, as authors, and as artists. Take someone like Kant, who is this reputation as this cold, lifeless philosopher, but read the first page of his critique of pure reason. There's a time when metaphysics was called the queen of all the sciences. Now in accordance with the fashion of the age, the queen proves despised on all sides, and the matron, outcast and forsaken, mourns like Hakuba. This isn't how you write a scientific paper. He's comparing metaphysics to Hakuba. 
Philosophers write in prosody because they want to make you feel just like a poet, just like a filmmaker. Listen to how William James talks about a subject as boring as determinism and free will. To our crepuscular natures born for the conflict, the Rembrandtesque moral chiaroscuro, the shifting struggle in the sunbeam in the gloom, such pictures of light upon light are vacuous and expressionless, neither to be enjoyed nor understood. He's literally painting this picture in the most absurd, over-the-top way. But it's worth it because philosophy recognizes the importance of art, of making the thinker feel. If philosophy is then stripped of its context, if it's just simplified and paraphrased and summarized, will we too be like the person who just reads movies, trapped in a purgatory of knowledge with nothing more? Above all, one must be what one is, without display, in sober honesty, evading all temptation to parade oneself as an exaggerated figurehead. This is Jose Ortega Gasset explaining what the philosopher ought to be, and it changed how I looked at philosophy forever. He's saying that the philosopher must truthfully be what one is. When I read this, philosophy just didn't feel theoretical anymore. The idea that philosophy could be communicated through the philosopher's state of being. This was huge. This made me realize why I connected with certain philosophers so much. Thoreau didn't just talk about nature and independence. He built himself a cabin and lived there in solitude. He didn't just talk about nonviolent protest. He stopped paying his taxes, got sent to jail because he didn't agree with the American-Mexican War. Simone Weil didn't just write political philosophy. She worked in car factories to understand working class labor. The list goes on. These are people that transmit philosophy to their state of being. Really, the thing is, is that all of philosophy on YouTube right now is AI-generated images and whiteboard animations. I just want to show people that philosophy is more than that. Philosophy is alive. You learn about philosophy through being in someone's home, through having a connection with a different culture, through experimenting with a different way to live life. Utilizing philosophy means changing how you live your life, and learning about philosophy means living your life. So why can't, when people explain philosophy, include more life? We've learned that useful knowledge is useless if those new beliefs do not become a part of who we are. We've learned that it's the philosopher's role to be an artist and make the learner feel. We've seen that the most impactful philosophy happens when it's communicated through authentically displaying who one is. All of this is to say that I'm that guy. I want to be that guy. My art is film. I can make people feel. I present these films on a YouTube channel which displays authentic being. And instead of letting concepts like risk and freedom and self-reliance remain theoretical, I'm determined to be actually living them. It's one thing to just say reality is absurd, but it's quite a different thing to act within that absurdity. To not just posit an axiom for societal engagement, but to go show what engagement looks like. And I don't want to just talk about meditation. I'd rather meditate for three hours a day in the solitude of a farmhouse and learn from the experience itself. It's quite a dangerous thing to remain in thought. I don't want to make that mistake again. Now, I'm on a mission, and I'm here not to share what I learn, but who I become.